the crew and I have been talking during this last break and we've decided that they have decided that I shouldn't say okay at the beginning of any of these anymore and that I should tell you about grandma. This is my husband's grandmother. She was raised in this house. This house was built by his great grandparents in 1892 and our son is the fifth generation on this land. So that lady who is overlooking our shoulder did the same thing, well not with the bond knitting frame, but was knitting in this parlor 90 years ago? Almost 95 years ago. Okay, now let's get back to our crew neck. Oh, I want to show you on the diagram. We're on the front, and this is something that we have not done. We've done all of these skills, but we haven't put them in the particular order that you are going to use here. And it, again, it's when you hit that eureka point, when you can put those needles into holding position and half knit position, it's mo it's, it flows very smoothly. So we're going to begin by putting 12 stitches on waist yarn, then we will knit one plain row. We're going to work each of these shoulders sections up separately. Notice I didn't mark it on this side. This is a crew neck. If it's done on one side, it's done on the other side, and I don't need the visual confusion. These four little marks indicate every other row decreases. So there's 58, one plain row, and then a series of four decreases at the same time. <clears throat> That's one of those pattern, those written pattern phrases that kills you every time because you've already completed all the steps they told you and then you find this thing that says at the same time and you have to rip back to the place where you had to do it at the same time. At row 66 we are going to do our short row shoulder shaping. It is just as easy but it comes out a little bit differently when you're working. It's a little bit easier actually when you're working one side of the front and then the other. So we'll go back to the frame and remember we are going to first put those center 12 stitches out of the way. We can bind them off, which I almost never do, even for an adult sweater. Oops, excuse me, did this backwards. We're going to put all the needles, we're going to put these on waist yarn, so we have to get rid of all the others. I have passed the eureka point today. Let's push these all the way forward. They are not working. Push these all the way forward. Okay, from six to six or 12. Now this is a perfect example. Oh, mistakes always happen for the right reasons. Students get very upset. Oh, they think they have to get out their transfer tools and spend the time to move those needles back in and put the stitches in front of the latches. No. The only rule is if the stitches is behind the latch, the latch must be open. That's a perfectly serviceable knitting position and we're going to take advantage of it. So we're going to put these 12 stitches, remove the sweater yarn from the eye of your carriage. Swing that carriage over, and it is when you get in this position that you need to put your waist yarn right into the eye, double eye. It is between the last needle in holding position and this first working needle. If you try to put it in before then, you'll drop stitches. There we go. We caught all of them. There's one, two, three. That's good enough. Three is close enough. Let's snip those, drop them off, get them out of the way and go work on our shoulder shaping, or on our neck edge shaping. Drop those back. Okay. Now this is a little trick that you don't catch, I didn't catch on to the first time. My row counter has been going all the time. It does not know how to read waist yarn. So it says now 62. Remember we were on row 58 when we stopped there, so let's go back to row 58. Turn your row counter back. And because our yarn is coming off the right-hand side of our knitting, we're going to work on this right front first time. Okay, time to put those needles back into half-knit position. Pull up the slack in your fabric guide, that slack that you let it have. And remember I said you have to work one plain row before you can do a decrease. So we're going to knit our one plain row across and we're going to use a decrease. Today I'm using a two by one transfer tool, which means, and I'm going, I am doing the cheap Nordic ski wear effect, which is a, officially called a reverse transfer. It is a fully fashioned, meaning it goes into the second needle. I go to the third, when I have a two prong transfer tool, I go to the third stitch in from this front neck edge. Remember, we want this nice slope here. Remove that, stick it toward the outside, for you to learn this kind of transfer is for you to learn lace. All you have to do is learn how to put it together. Okay, there's one, 
and I knit two rows. Remember, they're every other row. I am very careful to go well beyond my knitting so that I hit my row counter. I'm using this tool kind of fast. I want you to see the rhythm. Notice how it comes straight out, pushes straight in, lifts. This is one of the manual skills that you learned in the first day. Always two rows between. Again, well past my clicker. Counter of my counter. This counter saves you so much time. It's wonderful. Three. I'm moving my claw weight. Oops, I didn't go past my counter clicker that time. 65, 66. Well, remember, now this is shaped all the way. I have all four of my every other row decreases. And it is time to start shaping on this edge to get that nice diagonal, well, it's not very much of a diagonal shoulder, but a little bit. However, my yarn is coming off this side. So before I can do that, I need to knit across because remember, your partial shaping starts on the side opposite the carriage. We are in two steps of seven. Two, four, six, one more makes seven. Knit across. Put one more into holding position. And knit back. And ordinarily, you would put the rest of these needles out into holding position. However, remember you have to knit one last row to double up. See that? Can you see that wrap there? There it is. See how there's two loops on that needle? And we want to close that up with our last row. So instead of pushing these into holding position, here is the eureka point. We push these back into half knit position and knit our last row. See how this is even easier than forming the back? That shoulder is complete. All the decreases have been done. Those are ready to put on waist yarn. And as long as we're at this end, let's put our waist yarn on. Put four rows. And then we'll put it in holding position and go to work on the other side. Now, take a good look at this knitting. This side is shaped. This side is not. It is time to go back and work on this side. I want, it doesn't matter if you start on the, with your carriage on the inside or the out, although I like to keep my odd rows going in that direction and my even in that. It's very important when you go back to your sweater yarn that you turn your counter back to 58 because that's what row you are on here. Then you will knit one plain row and do your decrease. And two rows, decrease, etc. You'll do your four, then you do your short row shoulder shaping. Remember this time to shape it from this side. This is going to, the diagonal is going in this direction. I once had a student who made her shoulder seam go the other way, but pay attention that it's the outside of your shoulder. When you have shaped the front of the neck all the way up and removed those two sections on waist yarn, the rest of it is exactly like the back. You rehang those lower stitches to do the rib. Again, 47 stitches, 12 rows. Consult your sweater blueprint. It will get you there. When you have finished the back and the front with their ribs, remove the waist yarn. You are ready to rejoin me so that we can do the shoulder seam together.